Frankenstein, unreasonably cold weather, and tons of lava. What do these things have in common? They all trace their origins back to Mount Tambora. This volcano in Indonesia had such a massive impact that the aftermath could be felt in Switzerland even a year later. And these spots are thousands of miles apart. Soon, we might be facing something similar again. Stick around because I'm about to reveal the exact spot where the next eruption is expected to happen in 2025. Back in 1815, Mount Tambora erupted with unprecedented force, sending a colossal cloud of fine particles into the atmosphere. This cloud reflected sunlight, leading to global cooling and even the year without a summer in 1816. Temperatures plummeted, crops failed, and families worldwide faced food shortages, compounded by various health issues. Fun fact! Frankenstein appeared because of abnormally cold weather in the summer of 1816. The author got stuck indoors in Switzerland and wrote this story to pass the time. But that is the only positive aftermath. In England and Ireland, people struggled to find food. The crops were too bad that year, and this year without summer cost them lives, all because of the eruption in Indonesia. While many other volcanoes have erupted since then, None have had consequences as dramatic as Tambora. However, climate professor Marcus Stoffel from the University of Geneva believes potential serious eruptions aren't just a matter of luck, it's only a matter of time. So it's up to us. We can sit back and wait for the inevitable, or we can start preparing today. This future eruption will happen in a world that's vastly different from the one in 1815. Not only is our planet more densely populated now, but we've also experienced irreversible changes that affect our daily lives. Now, if you think volcanoes are always the bad guys, think again. They've actually played a crucial role in shaping our planet. They help with land formation, atmospheric development, and climate modulation. Just look at Yellowstone, for example. When thick lava oozed to the surface, it spread across the landscape and transformed the area forever. When volcanoes blow their tops, they release a mix of lava, ash, and gases, including carbon dioxide. But don't worry, compared to the emissions from fossil fuels, the amount from volcanoes is pretty tiny. What scientists are really keeping an eye on is sulfur dioxide, because it can have a big impact on our climate. When a major volcanic eruption happens, it can send sulfur dioxide soaring into the stratosphere, which is about seven miles up in the atmosphere. Once there, it transforms into tiny aerosol particles that scatter sunlight, helping to cool the planet. This cooling effect isn't immediate though. Those particles can hang around for a couple of years and even circulate all around the globe. Nowadays, we've got special equipment to monitor sulfur dioxide emissions from space. Take Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines. During its eruption in 1991, it released around 15 million tons of sulfur dioxide. Now, while that's a lot, it wasn't quite as massive as the eruption of Tambora. Still, Pinatubo managed to lower global temperatures by about 0.5 degrees Celsius for several years. Tambora, on the other hand, dropped average global temperatures by about 1 degree Fahrenheit. I know what you might be thinking, that's not much, but trust me, it makes a difference. If the planet warms up by just 1 degree Fahrenheit, it could really mess with sea levels. Experts think we might see a rise of up to 8 inches by the end of this century. This could wipe out a lot of farmland and coastal habitats, which would be a huge blow to many communities. So maybe a volcano eruption that can cool off the planet is like a natural mechanism helping us out? Not exactly. While it does cool the planet off, don't get tricked into thinking it's the kind of coolness our planet needs. Such temperature shifts can severely mess up with the crops, like they did in 1816. There's also evidence that major eruptions can disrupt rainfall patterns, leading to drier conditions in monsoon regions across Africa and Asia. You see, the summer monsoon relies on the temperature difference between land and ocean, which can be altered by volcanic activity. Interestingly, 
a warmer climate may enhance the cooling effects of volcanic eruptions. Experts explain that the formation and movement of aerosol particles depend on climate conditions. As global temperatures rise, faster air circulation can lead to smaller aerosol particles, which are more effective at scattering sunlight and thereby intensifying the cooling effect. Oceans also contribute to this dynamic. A warming ocean surface creates a stratified layer, hindering the mixing of warm and cold water, which could mean that volcanic eruptions primarily cool the upper ocean layer and the atmosphere above it, according to Stoffel. Moreover, climate change may influence volcanic systems directly. The melting of ice can trigger more eruptions by reducing the pressure that allows magma to ascend more easily. Additionally, increased rainfall associated with climate change can seep into the ground and interact with magma, potentially sparking eruptions. While the prospect of a cooling period due to a volcanic eruption might seem beneficial amid climate change, scientists warn that the effects could be dire. The immediate consequences could be severe, particularly for the estimated 800 million individuals residing near active volcanoes. A major eruption could devastate entire cities. For example, Campi Flegre, located near Naples, Italy, is showing signs of increased activity and threatens the lives of about 1 million people. Now, if you're from Oregon, beware, as experts say this state might experience volcano eruptions. Are you scared? Don't be. It's actually not as scary as it seems. Let me explain why. There are more than 80 volcanoes in Oregon, but we're not interested in a single one of them because it's an underwater volcano that is likely to erupt in 2025. Axial Seamount is the most active volcano in the Pacific Northwest, yet it remains largely unknown to the public due to its location approximately 300 miles offshore and nearly a mile beneath the ocean surface. While its upcoming eruption is expected to pose no threat of a tsunami or significant land-based earthquakes because of its depth and distance from the Cascadia Fault, the data gathered from studying its eruptions can enhance our monitoring of potentially more hazardous volcanoes. Let's call it a friendly eruption, shall we? In reality, predicting eruptions is a complex endeavor. We often encounter alarming headlines, such as Yellowstone is about to erupt. Should we take these claims seriously? Not really. Yes, Yellowstone sits atop an active supervolcano that has experienced three major explosive eruptions in the past 2.1 million years. The last eruption occurred approximately 70,000 years ago, with the most significant explosion taking place around 631,000 years ago, forming the massive Yellowstone caldera. Naturally, many people are curious about whether Yellowstone will erupt again and when that might happen. Fortunately, scientists are employing new techniques to delve into these questions. A recent study suggests that Yellowstone is unlikely to experience another major eruption anytime soon. The reason is that the magma beneath the park is divided into a network of separate chambers. While there is a substantial amount of magma present, it's not sufficiently interconnected to support an eruption. Previous studies propose that the existence of a massive layer of magma beneath Yellowstone, but these latest findings change that notion. To gain a clearer understanding of the subterranean dynamics, researchers utilized a technique called magnetotellurics, which employs Earth's natural electromagnetic fields rather than seismic waves. Since magma is a good conductor of electricity, this method is particularly effective for mapping molten rock and comprehending underground activity in volcanically active regions. By using magnetotellurics, scientists created a detailed map of the magma under Yellowstone, enabling them to make more informed predictions about future eruptions. But what will happen if an eruption similar to Mount Tambora occurs? By and large, there will be huge climate chaos, yeah, the best scientists are looking for the solution should it really happen, but they don't have it yet. So technically, we're not ready for the second Mount Tambora. But for now, we're pretty much safe. No major eruptions are predicted. Whew! 
that's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.